The Jubilee Line extension opened in 1999 as one of the largest construction projects to take place in London at the time. It fulfilled a plan that had been in limbo for 20 years in extending the newly constructed Jubilee Line from London's West End to a new district further east. When constructed, the extension and the many innovations it brought with it were seen as the very cutting edge and future of transportation in London. However, the extension is nearly a quarter century old, and since its construction, other projects have been constructed on the network. So, in this video, I will be answering the question, how well has the JLE aged over time? The first thing we are going to look at are the new trains that were introduced just prior to the extension's opening in 1998, but were specifically built for the extension. The 1996 stock is especially well known for the sound of its traction motor, which has now become an association with the Jubilee line as a whole. Since being introduced, these trains have had a few improvements, with an extra car being added, conversion to automatic operation, and a light refurbishment of the passenger cabin. Since its introduction, only one new deep level train has been introduced on the network, it being the 2009 stock that runs on the Victoria line, which unlike its predecessor, is driven manually. So overall, when it comes to trains, the JLE has aged pretty well, with the 1996 stock still being one of the most advanced trains in London. Probably the most recognisable feature of the Jubilee line extension is the platform edge doors installed at 8 of the 11 stations. This was the first railway in the UK to use these types of safety devices. Considering that these would prevent any incidents where a passenger would jump onto the live track bed below, it is surprising that no other stations on the London Underground network have had these installed, even though they are seen quite often around the world. Since the JLE, the Underground has expanded a further three times. Twice in 2008, where a new station at Wood Lane was added to the Hams in the City line, and the Terminal 5 extension opening on the Piccadilly line, and again in 2021 with the extension of the Northern line from Kennington to Nine Elms and Battersea Power Station. None of these new stations have had PEDs fitted, instead having the same bare track bed. However, the Elizabeth line that opened last year does use platform edge doors, although they prefer the term platform screen doors as they are full height, unlike on the Jubilee line. So, these doors are a good innovation and TfL intends to put them on other lines, but right now they might not have been successful as they hoped. Also, I think they need lubrication. Of course, the main component of the Jubilee line extension are the unique modern stations that were constructed to accommodate it. Most of these stations before Canada Water appear to be rather similar using a very monochromatic look, with each using its own lining for the platform wall. Westminster using grey perforated metal panels, Waterloo using small silver tiles, Southwark using bare concrete, London Bridge using similar panels to Westminster but this time being blue, and Bermondsey using aluminium sheets. Overall, most of the designs have aged quite well, especially Waterloo, with it looking similar to a corridor at Green Park. However, I have noticed paint chipping off some of these, especially at Westminster, leaving a rather displeasing bare steel look. Also, soot has become a problem on these, making them impossible to touch without getting your hands dirty. The larger stations have aged better, although the smooth concrete look at stations like Canary Wharf and Canning Town has started to look a bit rough and dirty in recent years. Also, Canary Wharf, despite being a great station, has had issues with capacity, despite its scale, due to the unprecedented growth of the area around it. North Greenwich has arguably aged the best, as it was of course built for an exhibition that was a complete flop, but soon the former space was converted into a concert venue and now provides an appropriate transport link to the area, and the design has arguably aged the best in my opinion. So, overall in this area, some of the stations on the JLE have aged quite well, but some have been stuck in the past a bit. One final thing that I would like to point out is that there are some unique individual elements that were incorporated into some of the stations. For example, 
Many stations don't use the bog-standard London Underground bench, with many stations using a leaning bar style bench, which we haven't seen on the tube since, which personally I think is lovely. When it comes to actual benches, there are some interesting ones at London Bridge and North Greenwich. Bermondsey also used to have a unique design, but for some reason they removed them and replaced them with standard ones. Also, the escalators at stations like Westminster are looking quite old, with different colours of light bulbs, used especially as they were made before the introduction of cheap LEDs. So when it comes to these things, it has aged quite well, but some of the unique things have been replaced over time as things break down and get fixed. So overall, the Jubilee LAN extension has aged favourably well, although in some places it does echo its 1990s roots. However, it is no longer the modern pride of the tube, with areas like the Northern LAN extension taking on that role. Thank you so much for watching. See you all very soon.